And today, Staff or Tour, we bring you to CB. Pardon my <laughs> thematic sound. A very historic town in Transylvania, which is part of Romania. You can notice upon a approach this here familiar shape that you find virtually everywhere, even in very unpopulated areas. Often repurposed as an airport or an airfield, and the oval uh, very often converted into a soccer field or a race track. I'm not claiming that everything that's this shape is unrelated and reconfigured, but some of them are. Otherwise, why would they exist in the middle of the desert? There's been no one ever living in the area, at least as far as we are told. But they are prevalent, and they are the same in dimension and shape and structure. And anyway, you notice this one right away. Whether it means anything, that's for you to decide. But along the canal here, or <clears throat> the uh, river that we're told, anything, again, in my mind, anything this equally uniform width as this for the length that it is, is to me a canal. I suppose I'm right on every account, but I believe the majority of them are canals. Maybe they started out as rivers, or maybe they even meet up with rivers, or perhaps maybe they are rivers, but I don't believe so. I believe that they were designed this way, and what we colloquially refer to as starfords are often along these. In my mind, giving credence to the theory that they are some sort of an energy harvesting structures. CBU Romania here, it isn't obvious at first that this has anything to do with the shape of the stylistic construction of what we have come to know as star forts. It does bear some of the hallmarks of the old world sort of grid, the way they would lay these cities out. But from here, you wouldn't think that this had anything to do with star forts. And in the history of the city is it was initially Roman, um, settled eventually by settlers from France and from the Holy Roman Empire and developed into a, you know, rather important trade center. And it was part of the Austria-Hungary until it was dissolved. I believe it was besieged and sacked by the Mongols and the Turks a few times. Uh, I believe in the 1400s, it was besieged by the Turkish forces. By the 1700s, you have your first Jesuit church being formed here, which is always highly suspect. You have the first brewery being formed here the same decade and slowly becomes a hub of kind of increased technology the first railway opens in the 1870s. 1896, you have the first use of electricity. They're only the second city in Europe to use an electric trolley in 1904. And while their population was initially primarily German people, in the 1850s, I think they had, out of 12,000 people, 10,000 of their German. Today, only about 2,000 exist. So the timeline seems to match just about everywhere else as far as the advent of the breweries and the electricity, the Jesuit church, and the trolley car. It is a very a well-preserved historic city center and a very popular tourist place. Now it's NATO will meet here, and it's really become an epicenter for the deep state in Europe. Any, anything that happened first in Transylvania, or Romania usually happened here. The first brewery, the first zoo, the first book, the first, you know. I mean, from from this view, it looks a little bit mundane. So why are we here if this is a star for tour? The answer to that is because of this old map, formerly known as Hermannstadt, this city. And you can see here, this is the shape and architectural style that we have come to know as Starfort. You'll note the ring of towers with antennas and the central one here, and to a lesser extent here. The canal here that actually enters the city here. I'm not sure what it does. Circles around. Not sure where it goes after this. Perhaps there's an exit point here. And bridges. And these lakes. These random lakes out here just ringing the whole area. But once you get down in here, Sibiu, Romania tells you a different story. It's known as a city with eyes. And that comes from the structures here. You see these eyes on the roofs? These sort of unsettling little um, style of architecture here where the, where the houses have eyes. <laughs> I mean, it looks kind of cartoonish, but it also looks a little bit unsettling. But once you are wandering around on the streets here, and here's the manhole cover. And I'm, uh, for some reason, I always really look at the manhole covers in cities. That's a little personal quirk of mine. But this one looks strangely like the Baphomet goat. Just And maybe it's coincidence. I don't know. But I mean, it is in Transylvania. We were talking about Transylvania, right? The home of Dracula. 
<laughs> so, you know, I wouldn't put it past them to be somewhat sinister. Once you're walking around this area, I mean, you could actually see this architecture here, this brickwork, which there must be a billion bricks in the city. Everywhere, you see that this potentially, in my mind, looks like the entire city is a converted star fort. I mean, these archways, everywhere you go, there's this brick after brick after brick and looking just very ancient, very, very old. You can see how... You see the level here, how, it, how it's just, it looks like all of this is a veneer over brick construction. It's hard. And I mean, a lot of it's just pretty run down, seeing as how it's incredibly old. And just strange things, sealed up windows everywhere and very bizarre offset doorways, strange angulated walls. It looks to me like a city that has i imagine you know, a rural sort of farmstead of people that is strung around the hillsides farmers raising sheep and living lives of relative you know peace and suddenly having to flee back inside of the the largest fort you can call it largest structure around which would be this massive ancient star fort and then they eventually have to settle in because perhaps they're being besieged for a long time or or i don't know but eventually they just end up building homes eking out homes all around it on top of it and inside of it and sealing up areas that you know who knows but that's what it looks like to me so you've got these very obvious antenna energy gathering sort of devices the fountain in the middle and surrounded just by buildings that make no sense and you couldn't tell this from above at least i couldn't it looked like a normal city but this is hodgepodge mix i mean this looks like it was once the interior of a cathedral it's sealed up like this with these veined roofs. Everywhere you go in here, looks very strung together. You've got magnificent structures like this. And here they are just living alongside what appear to be ancient waterworks. I mean, I'm sure these were plugged up at some point with these larger stone. And I don't know why these would be doorways, so I'm assuming they would be waterways, just like we've seen. And, and, and the houses were added at different times or, you know, conjoined. You know, they meet at funny angles. Nothing really seems like it was planned. Seems like it was sort of shoehorned into this area. Reminds me of the old mining towns in the 1800s, but a lot more dense and very, very interesting. The entire place. Here's your central dome here. I mean, there must be a billion bricks in this city. All of this is, I'm sure, brick underneath. What a fascinating little place, huh? You would never know it from above. That really, this is just a massive walled structure all the way around everywhere you go. And granted, it looks a little beat down. I mean, there's all this crappy graffiti everywhere and, you know, all the hallmarks of a major city. Are these people even aware? I have no idea. How can you not be? This is just incredible. CBU. Here would be your little town square. Out here, you got some more modern stuff going on. This is the heart of the old, old town part that's more interesting to me. Because this is the Stafford tour. Not no modern tour. Little Torahs. Not sure what or whom this gentleman is. And the whole area was made. UNESCO site. These looking like World's Fair buildings. Your little eagles and your little red and, red and white stripes. The town Square with all the eye homes have eyes. This one looking like an owl kind of peeking over the top. It just is amazing how you can have something so beautiful and you have some jerk off just go, Jimmy was here. <laughs> like, not that important, Jimmy. Uh, you can graffiti something, just make something nice. I don't know. Paint a nice mural. Do something somewhat creative. Not just some scribble like a five-year-old. Duh. Some repurposed old world stuff. This was for water. These little causeways and its location along the canal kind of, you know, solidifies that in my mind. But I found it to be very, very incredible how, how well hidden it was from above. Are you ready to dive down in here? Check things out for yourself, which, you know, that's what I'm doing here. So maybe you don't have to. Or maybe you think I'm doing a crappy job. Maybe you want to do it yourself. I don't care. You know, I'm just trying to bring a spotlight to certain areas of the world that I believe are of interest and they hold little keys that, you know, maybe I'm not picking up on. Maybe you're watching this and you could discover something that leads you down a different trail. I mean, you know, we're just trying to figure out who we are and what we're doing here because we don't buy the narrative that we're given these were forts and they were just whipped up just put up in a heartbeat you know when someone invaded like look at how many bricks there are look how many billions and billions of bricks there are in this city to make all of this massive structures out of brick there's just something hidden here some of these are repeats different angles of the same whatever this is i mean how many bricks are missing out of this thing and it doesn't it's, it ain't going anywhere these old world structures these low windows and it's just got all the hallmarks of a, what we're looking for Goodbye, weird eyeball houses. Oh, I see. Oh, this must be from 2020 because all these ninnies wearing masks. Mask up, you ninnies. Anyway, moving on. Now we gotta go to Cherry, Italy, which is in the city of Turin. 
small little place with a dizzying history of Roman conquest. We're told the city had a wall encircling itself for defense. Weird little place. There were very ecclesiastical wars. There were treaties that were broken. It was sacked and raised multiple times. You know, just a dizzying array of historical events prospering during the Renaissance era. The Roman character, most, most likely fictional, but Pliny the Elder, referenced this place, naming it as a fortified settlement. There's allegedly an old church that rests in the place where another older church was, where it rests in place of where another older temple was, which is probably dedicated to Minerva. And the history uses these vague terms like most likely, probably, seems to be, perhaps maybe was, legend has it that, and all that sort of stuff. Legend has it that the present day name of the city was given by Barbarossa, who, after ransacking it, looked back upon its ruins and asked Matu Shiri, which uh, I believe means, who were you? But it was purchased and sold and resold and traded and 1871 it got a railroad and it was briefly occupied by Germany and afterwards in the 50s and 70s experienced mass migration and so why are we here? After all, it doesn't look very star 40, does it? Why are we here indeed? Because yet again, under the surface here, beneath the veneer of this very uniformly looking small province, we again find via old documents that this city, Shiri, was indeed at one point a star fort. How about that? Ringed here, as it were, by this outer wall and these shapes. And here, the central hub, the central power plant, what I call, of the city up here in the knoll. That's why. That's why we're here, America. Or should I say world? And so as we descend upon her in our grace to behold the tightly spaced Italian walls in search of clues, what we find are the usual array of brickwork, incredible architecture, storied buildings. If that doesn't signify electricity, then I don't... Fountains, symmetry, stonework, the red and white stripes, the mud flooded buildings, the wreath, the eagle, all of the hallmarks that we've come to expect. Here you have an old rendition of it looking kind of comical really with the type of technology that we supposedly have and then the buildings that exist just showing the contrast between this what's already here and the people looking very modern here except for this standing out like a sore thumb again this old world stuff still more majestic than anything we're doing today still more attention grabbing even though it's been stripped down completely, still more ornate, nothing to see here, still more ornate and decorative and creative than anything we're doing today. Though clearly this has been stripped of most of its glory. Interesting why we need so many doors. And the evidence here and here, like it's being rebuilt. If it weren't for a handful of histor historical buffs, like these old chimneys and things, it'd be long gone. I don't truly believe they're chimneys, but who am I? Friggin' Jack Whispers, that's who. So despite the fact that there's very little about this place online, <laughs> Here you go, this door within a door. But uh, we're gonna believe that there's never been giant people, just regular people. We just like doors that are like that. Old paintings here depicting the town, showing that even this is older than the hillside. Here's one of the inside of one of these cathedrals. I believe this one, the interior, is just pretty breathtaking. And this is just one little area inside of the amazing city of Turin and a hidden Stafford. Goes without saying, but I would just love to visit any of these places if they weren't experiencing ridiculous self-created energy crisis and whatever. Perhaps I would. But another time then. For now, we are moving on. This time to Regensburg, Germany. And Regensburg is simply a city in Bavaria alongside a canal with about 150,000 people to live here. And it used to be in the Holy Roman Empire. We're told it's as old as the 5th century. We're told that the First Crusade stopped here and Peter the Hermit led a mob of crusaders that tried to slaughter all the Jews. Just, just, you know, just a pit stop on the way to Jerusalem. We're going to stop and try to kill the Jews, allegedly. Which really was a precursor to the event that happened uh, and the Nazi party came to power. And there was an aircraft factory here and an oil refinery, which obviously the Allies bombed during the oil campaign of World War II, where uh, Churchill decided to just bomb everywhere possible in Europe. It seemed very strategic, and it seemed to target old world cities, but what do I know? And so what you have left is, while allegedly destroyed... It also is remarkably untouched and preserved. Now, I don't know how those two sentences can coexist, but they often do. And so, no obvious star for apparent. So, what brings us here, you might ask? And again, we start with old documents. This old map of Regensburg showing what appears to be walled city alongside the canal with wooden boats. And in a series, it shows the progression of the city in a way. This from this wooden bridge here to stone bridge with various castles like towers in between. And here, and it 
merited a closer look. And what you see here in these old paintings and when you're on the ground is the, again, very obvious contrast between these peasants and this amazing thing with what appear to be, I mean, antennas. Mm-hmm. Underground areas, recessed buildings, the whole nine yards. Tacky clock that does not fit, especially when you're talking about things like this, this grandeur, this here you have this historical photograph here looking like uh, they're uncovering things. You know, it's so funny. These people back then with their, their same outfit. They have one outfit for everything. Black coat, hat. I mean, they're out digging or whatever, constructing this. And they're all wearing the same clothes. Here's your electric tram at an insanely early age. This is 1903. This is 1913. And this looking just ancient. Here's your uh, the electric tower above the city as it would need to be. And just who has... The ability to make this. It's just unbelievable. All this gold leaf and gold plating. It's just the opulence and the detail is just outstanding. These pictures have crappy low resolution, but you get the idea. And just unbelievable. Like, why don't, why doesn't every house, like, why don't, if we can make stuff like this in the 1900s, like, instead we get flat, low popcorn roofs or whatever. Going underneath this nice facade of stucco, this old stone. And yeah, my guess would be this too was a star fort. Right, 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 right. This must be some uh, modern explanation of how they built these things. So, like, here's this little block here, right? What are you doing with it? You know, lift it up and put it where? You think this explains this back here? Explain this? <laughs> like, this little block? What are you gonna do with all these big ones? Like trying to explain how it's possible to reconstruct. You know, if you're if you're trying to simulate that, you must be scratching your butt going, yeah, well, I don't even know. We can't even make a good simulation of this boss. Silence, said the king with the pig. This is it a panther? I can't even tell what that is. Just uh, I mean, what are we? We devolved? Are we have we devolved? We can't make this anymore? Or maybe, you know, maybe we never did. Maybe this current batch of humanity never did. I don't know. But I ain't seen nobody make something like this in a while. Or even try. And this is just one no-name little town in one state in Germany. One little blip barely anyone's ever heard of it no one ever goes here and it's completely incredible so much of this stuff needs to be looked at while it's still here because it won't always be here we won't always have the opportunity to learn from this who thing to do well i was trying to spend a bit of time in nineberg germany but apparently we've been been blocked or blurred out it. it was just here the other day this is an outrage let me in fine forget it instead we'll be moving on to just Jeff Boland I believe I said that correctly I practiced it like five times just Jeff. and here we are in this storied place and the history here we're told is well it's quite rich and the history here, well, if we can uh, overcome the sudden blurredness we seem to be facing, fine. You know what? Inward and onward. On through the blur. We'll get there somehow. And here in this place here, this jet, the Weaver's Town, it is uh, dating back into basically a fortress that was built by Sambor I, the Duke of Pomerania. And uh, it was a, there was a port, and it was a mint, and the Dominican Order was here, which is an order of the Catholic Church, which is, is a bit dubious in my mind. Then we have the Teutonic Knights that purchased this place and they expelled all the townsfolk. So there was no town, just apparently Teutonic Knights hanging. And sometime in 1410 uh, Poland recaptured it and then it was burnt down by the Hussites and then later during the Thirteen Years War, Bohemian mercenaries sold it back to Poland and then during the Reformation it was occupied by the King of Sweden and then it was terribly damaged during the Polish-Swedish Wars, and then it was annexed by the Kingdom of Prussia in 1770. Then the Napoleonic Wars, the town was captured by Polish troops, but then recaptured by Prussia again, and it became part of the German Empire. And then it suffered from racism and Germanization. And in 1910, the entire area, including Dischia, had a population of only 15,000, and they were primarily German. Where have we heard this before? Ah, yes. Everywhere in the area. And after World War One, it got reincorporated into the Polish state. And then in World War Two, it was basically the start of World War II. The lo location of the start of World War II can be pinned here when German bombers attacked uh, the sap installations they were trying to blow the bridge up and Germans sent trains with soldiers to try to capture the, the uh, bridges but the bridges were blown up anyway and Germany eventually occupied it as we know and it was horrible mass arrests murder and Germans imprisoned hundreds of Poles and uh, Catholic priests had murdered people in the forest and they carried out a public execution of 33 Polish residents interesting number there and after the war it became Poland part of Poland again and German residents were expelled and here it is today and it's blossomed to arrive 
roughly 50 or 60,000 people, and somehow, despite being burnt to the ground, damaged during multiple wars, like six or seven by my count, it is miraculously unscathed as far as the historical aspect of the city. One need only take a stroll here through town, and only if every few meters you'll come across something that is extremely old world. I imagine the people here are numb to it. Excuse me, do you know where I can get a taco? Do you guys even sell tacos? Don't have to be rude about it. Man, cover. Well, this place has a richness, of course. A very similar type structures as we have seen virtually everywhere. All the hallmarks of the old world that we have come to expect on these scaffolds. This being the inside of a cathedral, obviously. A somber place, although very ornate. And here's the facade here of the buildings that line the town square. Here's an old, some old postcards here. And this is the bridge that was uh, unfortunately destroyed, although they did build it back. I don't know about better. But here you see on the outskirts of town, this uh, this looks like a repurposed starfort. Red brick. And it is the same basement windows underneath regular windows. The added door. All of these things are by now what we're used to. These veined ceilings. Talk about these. My theory is that they are not just for decorum. There have been plenty of modern experiences experiments done that show that bricks can hold energy. They, they do when used properly. And my theory and what I believe to be case here, <laughs> really with this, this looking like, like electri electricity symbols, but these red and white striped bands are very similar to the ones that we see in tower stations or radio stations everywhere. These bands that come up from the floor from the column and I believe that they are actually carrying a signal, as it were, energy, as it were, passing along these as if they were pipes, these veined rooftops. And that is, I feel like most of these buildings had some sort of cistern underneath them, but they're pulling energy from the water. I'll show you, well, I'll get more into that when we uh, have a better view, I suppose. Here's an old image of the bridge, which is pretty spectacular, really, in its own way. A bustling industry here back in the day, and just really incredible. I, I like the... Uh, some old, old postcards here depicting life back in the simple days. Again, the striking contrast between the people here and the <laughs> technology that's around them. Couldn't these big antennas up here? Just pretty amazing stuff here. This old city, this being like a massive industrial plant. Not sure what those arrows are indicating. Here we have these interesting street lights that don't appear to be wired. Curious. Here's a very old picture. And what some of the buildings look like today. Only been restored. But yeah, I mean, this one, talk about a fixer up, uh, but all of them have this, this flooded out basement look. And here you go with the quintessential metallic dome, a little housing, which this one's been sealed off a little bit more. And this one, some interesting windows down here. Curious about those little fellows. Pretty classic architecture here. Nothing too surprising until we get to, well, this is a monster. I mean, by God, not much has changed, clearly. I don't know what they, what was destroyed so many times talk about. Uh, again, this is just a, just such a funny scene with these people, at these sloppy markets with the busted ass road. Just all this back here, just amazing. Some abandoned old buildings. Here's a modern radio tower, the red and white. And this place has definitely caught some beatdowns. It's definitely seen some brighter days. That's a shame when you see stuff like this. But you may ask, why are we here though? This is a Starfort. I was promised Starfort. Well, first of all, you weren't promised anything, okay? First of all, let's get that street buster. Second of all, I would not let you down. No, no, no. Wee! Hey, what's up, dude? Where'd he go? Dude, my homie got, my homie left. There he is. I need to ask him where I can get a Pivo. <laughs> oh, I bet you went in there. Ah, oh, it's a bank. He didn't. There he is. Hey, what's up, bro? Privyat. Nobody did? Hey, dude. Did you happen to, like, see that one guy, dude, that was over here, dude? He looked kind of like you, but not. Same kind of blurry face, though. If you see him, tell him down to get a beer. Wherever you are. The one that got away. The best friend that I ever could have had. Now I'll never know. Goodbye, sir. Where are we? Okay. I didn't want to go that way anyway. Oh, wait. There we are. And there we have it. The old cannon gave it away. The old cannon trying to sell me on the idea that it's a four day. Eh? There she is, folks. There she is. What I suspect to be the Stafford. You can tell the bricks. You can tell like, the embankment going up here. And that's not the only view. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know why it's not allowing us to see anything. Oh, here again. I'll have to do this the old fashioned way. Well, that's a bit of a bust. It won't let me over there, but you can see what I'm talking about, hopefully. And all of this looking very, very impressive. My god. How many bricks do you think it took to make that thing? Spectacular. And I don't know if this is enough to claim that there's a star foot here. I really, really actually, now that I'm here, I'm not really seeing much of it. But what I am seeing is the old world town square. And while we're here, let's discuss this old town square. Now, you see things like this, with these little balls on top. And you see things out here. You see the antennas. This is a 
typical old world town square. And what I believe happened here, well, the reason why I believe that these were set up like this, is if you can imagine the people that lived here before us, a society that left. Wherever they went, I don't humans though, I mean just regular human people, just a different generation, different breed, that came about technology in their own way. Focusing on electromagnetism and all the things that we wish that we could do today, but we just aren't allowed to. They'll send someone to kill us, <laughs> basically. But this is to me how it always seems to shake out. And it looks like some things are missing here, but you always have some variation of this. Fountain in the middle, where I'm assuming water gets brought up, pumped up, and usually sort of beamed out, if you will, like a Wi-Fi so extracted ether, energy extracted from the water, pushed out, picked up by all of these antennas. All of these antennas ringed around the town square, always. And you have these little closed urns, these things would collect it, perhaps. These antennas here, and distribute it further down, you see more antennas there, and you see these little attachments on the top. I don't know if they're filled with mercury. I don't know. There's something to them. That's how they would wirelessly light up. The way you can light up a light bulb in the presence of like a Tesla coil. This being some sort of a capacitor or even like another battery or a relay. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of the technical world. I'm not really trying to. I'm just viewing this from the point of view of a stranger. If you were to come here and see this sort of layout repeatedly and you're trying to guess how these old world people received their energy, their street lights, they powered their trains or whatever it is, the, tro the trolleys that we always see, where did it come from before the electricity? Because we know they had it before like, before we are told we have electricity. And so this is just a theory because I see it everywhere. Explain these. Explain what this point of this is. What was here before? Was it like a quartz, mounted quartz, and then we were using a, using electricity that way? And that's been replaced with the clocks, quartz instead of a clock instead. What is the point of these? Why are they so consistently situated on all these type of buildings? I don't think it's just decoration. It's usually a copper or a statue in here that acts as, I believe, you know, that has something to do with it. I don't know. I'm just saying what it looks like to me based on all the things that I've consistently seen in all these old cities. So yeah, this is a good enough town square as I need to point it out. Anyway, what do you kids think? The hell you guys doing? Beat it. I don't want any problems, guys. Just kidding. I don't want any problems. Hey, you lost little guy? Anyway, there you go again. There you go again. You got another one over there. See, I don't There's something up. Something that they're keeping from us. Ain't that right, buddy? Yeah, yeah, yes. Well, that's enough for today. Take me back. Take me home. I'm ready to go, bro.